work, guys. Work. Just gotta keep going. Just keep plugging away at this. <laughs> so, uh, hi guys, it's my Ingen from uh, Great Lakes Cultural Camps. Can't even say it. I uh, want to welcome everybody here to our outdoor kitchen. We're actually uh, over at a friend of ours place. Friend of ours place. <laughs> roar, 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 roar. I'll get to that shortly about how uh, I've been tongue tied and things haven't been going the way that they wanted to go. But uh, we're a little bit nervous here. This is our first time uh, doing something recorded or pre-recorded. And it's not something that we normally do. Uh, usually the people that we're with uh, are live humans and uh, there's a lot of cool interaction. So we called a couple of friends uh, to come and give us a hand just to be here and uh, get them to come and taste test and give us a hand with the last little bit of what we're working at. So I want to make some introductions. Uh, first, this is... Ani, bonjour. Now it's Kamiko Kwedish Nikas. It could just call me Cooks. That's what everybody calls me. But I'm Bernadette Shwana. Me, Bunch. Oh, bonjour. Je kamiko Kwedish Nikas. Kitkan Zibidunj ba Mayan Gan Bodem. Anish Nabe and Dao. My name is Phil Jones. I'm uh, from Garden River First Nation, and I'm just here to be entertained. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jess. Um, I'm here from Batuana First Nation. I'm just here to help out. I'm going to make some salad dressing. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Malcolm. I'm the uh, youngest of uh, the family. And uh, I'm here to help out uh, with my parents and everything. Awesome. So, and I'm Mayinga and Shawanda. Uh, as I introduce myself, we... Uh, also are missing a few people from uh, our family. We have uh, two of them that are up in Lake of the Woods. They're uh, up introducing one of our grandchildren to uh, the other part of the family. And uh, I believe they might be on the lake today fishing or harvesting. And then, uh, yeah, we, we want to be up there with them. And then uh, another one is Hannah. Hannah's over in Atikamikshing. And uh, they're wrapping up some harvesting of uh, wigwas or birch bark. And then our other son, Noden and Ashley, are uh, in Michigan. And they're tying up some loose ends uh, with uh, some things. And then hopefully uh, we'll be able to see them at some point in the near future. Uh, because of the COVID pandemic, the border has been closed uh, for quite some time. And uh, so which is why we're coming to you here uh, in this kind of virtual space. So one of the things that we wanted to do is uh, spend some time with you just sharing a little bit about some of the things that we do uh, here in the Great Lakes. And where we're located and situated is right where the uh, three Great Lakes, Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, and Lake Huron intersect. And uh, we are Anishinaabek, we are Anishinaabeg, Anishinaabe, um, for those of you that are trying to figure that one out, uh, some of the terms that uh, will help identify where we come from are Ojibwe or Chippewa. And uh, the way that we self-identify is Anishinaabeg. And uh, our family comes from Manitoulin Island, which is about three and a half hours away from uh, where we are currently. And uh, really glad to be in this uh, TP space here uh, our friends from Nogda Windeman uh, welcomed us and received us with uh, open arms and uh, allowed us to use this beautiful uh, space here to share some of the things that we do. And part of the reason why we wanted to uh, help and contribute towards the uh, Food Summit this year was just our love and passion for food and for cooking and for harvesting and for spending time together. So it's kind of unique that uh, we're doing this um, and there's a handful of us, but the other really cool thing is that we have some people that are here uh, with us that are uh, really important to us and that are a part of our life. And then also two that have uh, really been a part of my children's life. Uh, so Phil, uh, when we first moved up here to uh, Bauting, spent a lot of time with us and uh, introduced us to different waterways, um, different places here in the region, the area and ultimately uh, taking us out and uh, showing us some places. And so years on uh, have, have gone and passed. And um, you know we've been here in this area for 20 years. And uh, now our grandchildren uh, are coming out onto the land with us. 
So it's kind of cool. I really appreciate Phil you being here today with us and uh, coming to spend some time and support us in, in uh, these wonderful things that we're doing. So let's uh, switch it on over to maybe some of the food that's on and uh, Cooks maybe you can share with us a little bit about what you're doing. And uh, Phil, chime in any way that you want in terms of some of the questions that you might have with what's going on here. Uh, one of the things that we asked Phil to do was not only be a taste tester, but also to, um, because it was very unnatural, we uh, tried to do a couple of uh, takes and uh, bombed, really bombed on them. And uh, it didn't work out. So we figured we would, you know, bring someone in and, and asked Phil, um, it's to come in and just ask questions and be here. And that really is helping us uh, settle down. So thanks Phil for being here. No problem. So any questions, yeah, any that you have? Otherwise, Cooks, maybe you can start off and just share uh, with all of us what you're up to and what's happening um, over the fire today. Okay, this one that I have here, and this one's almost done, and this is moose meat, and it's like the backstrap. So it's like the, one of my favorite uh, pieces of the meat, and we just, uh, I just used this uh, cast iron frying pan and I put it in with some maple syrup and now I have some blueberries. So this is one of our favorites that I love to eat and that my children love. Cool. So this is almost done. And uh, maybe Nakama, if you can just tell us a little bit about that uh, moose. Where did this one come from? This, this was this past winter's. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so this one we end up um, helping our cousin uh, David um, and we went to go help him uh, haul it out and it was in November. Or, I think know, it was December. December, yeah. yeah. It was December, so we went to go haul it out. So um, he gave us a call and uh, told us I needed help and so we went over to go help him and then uh, it ended up, uh, I moose went in uh, how many yards? Probably a kilometer a in. A kilometer in, the end of going. So we ended up, uh, have to go in there and hand bomb it. Um, by uh, sled, so we uh, went up and walked in there and um, uh, quartered it, and then uh, loaded it up and then in the on our sleds, and then ended up walking, hiking it back out up to the, the trucks, and um, so we ended up doing that uh, with this one. Cool. So, cooks, tell me a little bit more about the next one that you're uh, working on right here. Okay, this one we have some smoked goose that we had done earlier. And I just cut it up into small cubes and I made some soup with it. And we have some uh, roasted uh, corn, some hominy corn, some potatoes and some onions. So this has been simmering pretty well almost all day. And uh, one of my favorite and our children's favorite is uh, the goose. And this was harvested this past spring. And I love spring geese and we usually cook it on an open fire hang it and we just keep spinning it and spinning it till it's done and uh, there's a whole process to that and uh, maybe we'll be able to share that with you one day but uh, this is the smoked goose that we had earlier and it's uh, we just wanted to make some soup with it cool and Nako maybe you can tell me just a little bit about uh, the kind of wood that we're using uh, yeah so we're using uh, hardwood right here uh, we're just cutting up on small pieces for the fire because if you have uh, especially uh, with cooking you want to be managing your fire um, so you want to use small pieces and then uh, you want to make sure it's uh, dry and uh, no bark on it so you can see on some of the, the bigger pieces some of the barks being cut off uh, but right now just splitting up in small pieces and uh, what's the purpose of the reason why we take the uh, bark off i uh, take the bark off so it's uh, not all smoky and uh, when you're cooking the food and such um, but, uh, yeah awesome phil you have any questions yeah so can you explain to me why you're using the process of cooking the fish on plant mix? Ah, so the flavor in the cedar, the planks, uh, and we, we don't just, we have to soak them too. We can't just put cedar planks in and start cooking on them. Those have been uh, soaking for a while. And um, if you think about it, a long time ago, we didn't have these beautiful frying, um, Cookware. Cookware. <laughs> um, a lot of our food was um, cooked differently, and today, you know, one of the things that we all, everybody loves is fish fries and everything else, but we have to start introducing uh, another way of cooking uh, our fish, and one of my favorites, and my children's favorite, is uh, boiled white fish. So boiled white fish, and I just mash it all up, and I put uh, blueberries in it, yeah, yeah. and that was uh, one of our favorites. Our guys love uh, baked fish. 
uh, sure they love their you know fish and chips and 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 fried fish, but I think they would prefer it baked, broiled, yeah, uh, in other different ways like that. Every, everything's good cooked and fried. <laughs> <laughs> fat, well, fat is flavor. No, it's good. Fat is flavor. So yes. actually, you know what? I don't I haven't been using an oil. I've been using actually a duck fat. So yeah. rather than using you know, the canola oil and everything else, I have this nice jar of duck fat, and that's what I've been using. Yeah. Awesome, good question. Okay, so maybe tell me a little bit about what's going on over here. Okay, so we have some salad here. Uh, this is uh, some of my maple syrup that we harvested. Um, that's where that, that's that one. I have some pickles, dill pickles that we harvested this last winter. I have some tomatoes and I've been using that. So everything that we try and do is we try to get ready for winter. So having all of this available, you know, here it is June and I have my, this is actually my second last jar of tomatoes. This is my third last jar of pickles, but I've been giving them away from last fall's, from last harvest, fall's yes. harvest. So this year we put in our garden. Unfortunately, our family garden is across the river on the American side, but we decided to do something different this year and we uh, planted in our backyard. So I have some uh, pickling cucumbers and I have lots of tomatoes. So making some tomatoes, some salsa, and I'm really excited for that. Cool. Here we have our salad and in the salad, I have some dandelion, some arugula, some spinach, some wild rice, some blueberries, some pears, strawberries, and some feta cheese. And um, our friend is busy making some uh, dressing that we're gonna put on there. Here I have some bannock, which everybody loves, right? But here we did it on the cast iron. We used the cast iron and I, it's baked. And I just put it off to the side. And in it, we have some rosemary, some parsley, some garlic, and that's how I made that one. Is that the stuff that came from the garden or is that uh, the store-bought yes. stuff? Nope, some of it's from the garden and some of it's from the store. And the crazy thing is, yes, I was, went to the grocery store and I bought a couple of uh, herbs and then I realized I have that in my backyard. So I'm laughing this morning, I'm looking at it and I was holding the package and I was telling uh, Nakam, I was like, I, ha I had bought this, but it's in my backyard. So we had a good laugh and uh, Jess was with me and we, we just had a good laugh about it. But it's like that way of thinking. Now, I don't have to go to the grocery store to buy it. It's in my backyard. Yep. So I have, uh, I think about four different places that I've put some herbs. And so now I just have to go to the backyard. I even got some mint. So I'm really excited. And it's starting to grow really good. You have to come by and check it out. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. So once Nalcom comes back into the teepee, I'll uh, ask him if he can share a little bit with you, Phil, about, uh, the process of uh, our garden, the things that we built. Um, we'll bring it back on over here yep, and uh, maybe you can share with us what's in the Dutch oven. This Dutch oven, if you want to take a peek here, is Ooh. our bumbleberry pie. So who said you can't bake pie outside, right? So this- So here's a question for those that don't know, why do you have ash on top? So this ash, actually it was the briquette's charcoal so what we did was we have this, uh, we heated those up and what we did was we put it at the bottom and we, till they were nice and hot, then we put some at the bottom, we put some on the top and that's how it baked. And then right now it's all broken up. But this tool that I have is very, very light. This is kind of what we use when we're out canoeing and it's one of our, uh, it's what we call a Dutch oven. So we can cook uh, turkey pot pie, we can make bannock, we can cook just about anything lasagna so when we're on a canoe trip this is one of the things that we usually use uh, when we're baking and we use this for our big meals cool nice so Nakam is back in the teepee um Nakam, one of the things that we were talking about was uh the our garden that we planted this year and uh just want you to think about right now uh, if you can share with the rest of uh, us about a little bit about the process that we did in uh, building the garden, maybe from the actual build to uh, some of the things in terms of the resources where they were harvested. Um, and Small Cook was sharing with you a little bit about uh, the purpose or reason why we decided to plant this year. And one of the reasons that we decided to uh, plant a garden 
this year was because of access. So normally we have access to a uh, family garden on the American side and uh, the Michigan side and our relatives over at Sioux Tribe uh, plant and that's where we go and help and harvest uh, each year. And uh, this year because of the border closure, uh, we don't have access and uh, there's still a restriction. Uh, today is June 17th, I believe, or in our family, we just say day. <laughs> And uh, so bringing it back to uh, the purpose and reason why we decided to plant, we're going to ask Nakam just to share just a little bit about it. Nakam, uh, what really stands out for you about uh, the family garden this year? Uh, I think uh, what to say is that it turned out really good. Uh, we're able to uh, plant uh, our own garden and plant stuff that we uh, tend to uh, eat more of, so um, like, like peppers and uh, just that. Uh, <laughs> other uh, crops or plants that we uh, usually use um, so it was uh, nice to do that and then um, even just with building the garden boxes that uh, we were able to get the lumber from uh, a local resource here in uh, Garden River uh, we were able to get lumber and then uh, we ended up building a, a four by eight boxes um, and uh, using the square foot method um, so yeah we were able to do that which was uh, nice and what about the soil uh, the soil we ended up uh, getting uh, some, we got some from a uh, local uh, Mennonite um, out uh, east of uh, the city and uh, their soil was uh, good um, and rich so we were able to use that and then on top of that we got some uh, other stuff uh, in the city at a local place. Um, yeah. Awesome. And uh, so one of the purpose and reasons why we decided to um, spend some time in that was also just to develop and grow our own knowledge and I uh, just want to just share a couple of things about uh, the reason why we do that. And uh, oftentimes uh, we can be really dependent and on uh, what's around us or what's available to us. And one of the things that I've learned um, during this time is uh, not to take things for granted and not to take um, for granted access to uh, certain places. And that was kind of one of the unique things that we ran into this spring was access to some of the places that we uh, normally would harvest. So our spring uh, goose harvest, for example, uh, was uh, we didn't have access to it uh, because of a, a closure and uh, as well as fishing, uh, early spring fishing. So that kind of leads back over into the purpose of the garden. And uh, it was really to develop the skill set as well as do some uh, research into um, some different types of methods that are available to us. And uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Paulette Steves, um, Dr. Uh, Steves, for her contribution in uh, sharing with us uh, some of the methods that uh, she's used. And uh, some really wonderful people just stepped in over this uh, past year, helping us with uh, uh, furthering our own knowledge. Um, by no means are we, um, you know, experts with growing things but uh, had some really wonderful people that uh, were able to share uh, a few things with us and, and our garden is really coming in nicely um, so we're going to bring it back over to the food here and we're going to start to wind down a little bit but uh, cooks maybe you can share with us what's going on right here okay so what I have here is I had cooked some moose burger earlier and some wild rice so I had to roasted some tomatoes out on the on the fire here in the cast iron so I roasted some vegetables and we mixed it all up and I have my peppers here and what I did was I put the wild rice mousse and um, the grilled um, vegetables and chopped it all everything all up and then we stuffed them with the peppers so this is something I, I like to try something different and uh, what I like about you know the food that we're eating is we don't need to just when we think about moose we think about all our traditional foods but we also like to try something new and exciting and something different um, you know using every part of that animal um, like one of uh, my sons he really like used to use the heart and he would chop it all up and make like street tacos with it so we can use all of our wild game for every way that we would normally eat our meals. So lasagna, stuffed peppers, um, spaghetti sauce. So um, just want to start to wind things down here a little bit. 
and uh, just take a uh, um, quick review of some of the things that we talked about. And actually, one of the things that we um, do when we come uh, and gather like this is uh, share. And whether it's sharing the food, whether it's uh, harvesting the food together, uh, whether it's uh, making sure that we're looking after elders within inside of the community. Um, that's part of what subsistence harvesting means to us. And so when we uh, wanted to share a presentation, um, that was kind of the way that we figured we would uh, uh, just make an introduction, it was really just some of the things that we normally do, uh, the way that we eat our food, and uh, some of the different types of methods in, in terms of cooking. So this kind of space is, uh, is very normal uh, for us. It's uh, familiar and it's something that we uh, regularly do uh, and often as a family. Um, one of the things that I think is really important to share is the uh, different types of places that we have visited over the years, the many, many different communities uh, across uh, North America uh, with various tribes that have opened their um, doors and welcomed us with open arms. Um, spent a lot of time um, in those communities and villages learning. And uh, so what's wonderful about it is that uh, our family has been able to travel to some far off distant places, but also to acquire the knowledge uh, that's there. And when we look at the importance of doing this, it's not only about uh, eating food that is, um, was once part of our diet, but also too that we're making those connections to foods that are local and what our grandparents or ancestors would have eaten uh, years ago and letting it become part of our diet once again and letting it become normal for our children. And so when I think about you know food and some of the things that we have here and goose and moose, uh, fish, these are the kind of foods that uh, our children crave and uh, still enjoy today. And uh, with our new grandchildren, that's one of the things um, that we've been doing is, is as we prepare these kind of foods is, is introducing them to it uh, through smell. They're still little, little ones uh, right now, uh, a month old and uh, three months, four, four months, months, four months. <laughs> and having them smell what it is or be there while the geese are being plucked or while the fish are being cleaned. And that should be normal. That's what uh, a generation or two generations ago was normal for most of us. And so we have uh, a responsibility as individuals, as uh, parents, as aunts and uncles, and even as community members to uh, help this next generation, or even for our own selves, um, have that introduction to some of these foods. So we're really grateful for the opportunity to share uh, just a really small part of uh, what we do. And um, again, it's something brand new for us. So uh, all of the hiccups that we had uh, in this recording uh, ask you to, you know, be patient with us. Um, we'll really make an effort to uh, get it a little bit better in whatever ways um, and make better. it work. When COVID's all over and things are what we'd say now maybe somewhat normal, come and visit us or we can come visit you. So you can take a look at uh, some of the things that we have shared in terms of some of the topics we've covered here today um, in looking at uh, some of our social media. And that'll give you a really good idea on the kind of things that we've been involved with in different regions. Um, and I really want to acknowledge uh, the elders and people that have taken time uh, with us because it's with their knowledge, their skill set, uh, passing that on to our family that we have been able to do this with other people. And um, the time that we spend is primarily with children and youth. And so uh, we always like to think that this, where this is going and where this is heading is um, that that next generation of uh, people in our community, this is going to become normal and they'll be uh, doing this right behind us. So uh, I want to thank the uh, organizers from the Intertribal Food Summit for uh, uh, creating this opportunity and space for all of us to come together and learn, share uh, resources, share knowledge and uh, skill set. And we look forward to uh, meeting some of you down the road and uh, 
Have a wonderful weekend. Bon appétit. Bon appétit.